Thank you. Thank you, Father. The Father would say to you, children, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I say to you, do not be afraid. Hmm. For I'm your father, and I love you, and I care for you, and I watch over you, and I keep you. And nothing is too difficult for me. Nothing is too difficult for me. I mean. Nothing is too difficult for me. I mean. Do not look at the reports of the world in okay. trouble. Mm. <clears throat> when you see these things, draw near to me. Hallelujah. Draw near to me. Draw near to me, for I'm preparing you to be a light into the darkness mm, you mean. for this very time. Yes. For this very time, I am preparing you to be a light into the darkness. Amen. To be a shelter in the storm. To be a safe haven in the time of war. Amen. Amen. I have prepared you for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes fixed upon my son, Jesus. Keep your Amen. eyes upon Jesus. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you for being obedient, Paul. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> as we get started tonight, um, I believe that it's uh, fitting for all of us to go to the Lord uh, concerning uh, the Ukrainians. And uh, Brother Fred and I have been diligently praying. Uh, a few days ago, I saw uh, the Lord. Um, we've been praying for divine intervention and for, for not only that country, but the surrounding countries. And um, I saw... Uh, the father deploy uh, the angels, the warring angels, uh, to go and fight uh, on the behalf of those countries. And I believe that they are already on the job. They're moving. They're manifesting themselves. And and so, you know, it's easy when when I'm sitting in my warm house with with food on my table and clothes on my back, and no bombs going off around me. Um, but this is, this is something that we, uh, we must not ignore and we must, uh, be an active part in what God desires to do, uh, for those countries. Uh, you know, we talk about the war zone and, uh, they are literally in the war zone. And, and so we fight for them. We pray for them. Uh, we battle uh, for them in the spirit realm, and that's what I saw this past week, that the angels had been deployed, and, and I am very thankful for that. Uh, I am seeing uh, things move into position uh, where those countries will be uh, delivered and brought uh, out of that situation, and uh, so I encourage each one of you as leaders uh, to be a part of what God is doing in the earth today. And um, as we start this session tonight, which is on restoration, <laughs> spiritual restoration, uh, I was reading in Isaiah 42 that says uh, that there are those that are sitting in prison houses, uh, those that are in bondage, and none will say restore. Well, in the name of Jesus, we say, restore, restore, restore. Uh, and that is exactly what we are going to be discussing tonight. And, um, and so I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. There may be other words. I know there's other words inside of you. Uh, you have freedom to give those, those words uh, as we open up the floor uh, to, to bring forth those words. We have some new faces, new people with us tonight. 
uh, we welcome all of you in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay, we're going to talk about spiritual restoration tonight. Restoration is in the heart of God. He wants to restore. That's the reason he sent Jesus uh, to the earth. Uh, you know, Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7 said, for unto us a child uh, is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Amen. Everlasting Father, Prince of Prince Peace. Peace. The increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And that's what we're talking about tonight, uh, restoration. And uh, he was born... Uh, a baby to uh, Mary, but he was also given as a, the son of God to all of us. Amen. I want to, to think about restoration and spiritual restoration, and the basic uh, uh, verse for this is Galatians 6, 1, which says, you who are spiritual, mm -hmm. restore, and that speaking to each of you. Uh, mm -hmm. There we need these basic principles for restoration. Now, the whole idea of this series, which we've been uh, dealing with for a few weeks, has been life-giving ministry. It, it was to give you some of the insights that we have learned through life and through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God for you to turn and uh, give, uh, pour out to the people. And so this is about you being a life-giving uh, minister. Amen. And uh, the way we do it, we become spiritual, be spiritual. Now let's think about, there are three core principles we want to start with. We all need to have these restored in our lives uh, in order for us to be uh, restorers. And uh, first, it's a restoration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Sherry and I were raised in a denomination uh, where they presented uh, what I call a salvation only gospel. Uh, it was just about being born again and, and getting your sins forgiven and then uh, thinking everything's okay and you just go to heaven when, you're, oh, when you die. Well, that's a, a limited view of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And when we ran into problems, uh, with our lives, uh, we had to turn to the Lord and, and to seek him. And we found out the first thing we needed was the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, there are, we found out there are a lot of other people that believe in the Holy Spirit. And so the point I want to make here, this is the first area of restoration is a, a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. And uh, if we want to be uh, spiritually minded, it has to come through the Holy Spirit. When we are in the world, when we were in the world, we were all in the world, we were rebellious against God. Uh, that's what I, I, Isaiah 53, 6 says. We were all rebellious. And uh, that's a uh, reason that God sent uh, Jesus to establish a new government because we had, mm -hmm. we had uh, forsaken the government that, of God. Uh, from the beginning, and now uh, there's a restoration coming. And so in this restoration, the first principle is the Holy Spirit. And as when we were in the world, our minds were worldly, they were programmed by the world. And when we became born again, uh, we still had the same mindset. And so it was because it was called a carnal mind. So many, many Christians have a carnal mind, but Romans 8, uh, verses six and seven said, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and, and peace. peace. Amen. For the carnal mind is hostile to God and cannot uh, submit to God, cannot be subject to God, cannot be. In other words, it cannot be subject to the government of God. And so here it is right from the beginning. We have to make that distinction between being carnally minded and spiritually minded. And I want to encourage all of you to keep on that road of continually being renewed in your mind, spiritually minded, for you are the ones that are going to restore. Hallelujah. Carnally minded people are not going to restore anybody or anything, but spiritually minded people. 
uh, are able to restore. And so that's the core of this uh, message tonight. Uh, we need to be spiritually minded uh, to be uh, restorers uh, and uh, re to re get restored in our lives anything that has been broken, anything that has been diminished or stolen. Uh, to restore those things, but not only in our lives, but in the lives of others. You are one who restores. Hallelujah. You who are spiritual uh, are the ones who restore uh, anything diminished, broken, or stolen. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be by the Spirit of God. And so there's three different areas then uh, that we need the Holy Spirit in, in all of these areas. And the first one is the restoration of the a Holy Spirit and uh, 1 Corinthians 12 say, says that all of the gifts, talking about restoration of the gifts of the Spirit, they all come through the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, Amen. through the Holy Spirit. Now, the second, I've mentioned it a couple of times, is about a uh, re restoration of God's government, that we mm. submit to God's government because Jesus, see, came mm. to bear the government upon his shoulder and we had all rebelled against God's government, and now it's time uh, to come back under God's government. And well, we see a real important picture in 1 Corinthians 12, verses uh, 28 and 29. It says there is a government, and the first there are apostles, and second there are prophets, and third there are teachers, teachers. and then the signs and wonders. And, and so if you're going to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, then you need to be involved in the government and submitted to the government. In James, uh, you know, six and seven, uh, seven says, submit to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Six says, uh, he resists the proud. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Therefore, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he, he will, will flee, flee from, from you. you. Glory to God. So you want to see the, the gifts in operation? You've got to be a part of his government, submitted to his government, and first are apostles, and second are prophets, and third are teachers, and after that, the signs and wonders. And see, if you're not uh, connected with uh, apostles and prophets and teachers, then uh, you don't get to operate in the fullness of the gifts of the Spirit because they come after. They're a part of the government mm. uh, and, and a unique place and position in uh, God's government. You know, what is restoration anyway? It's bringing things back to, to the position that is right, to their rightful position, position. and their rightful condition. And Whoa, the right hallelujah. thing is, so that is restoration. And we're going to have to be restored ourselves and first restored to the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're, Sherry and I were missing uh, to begin with because we were uh, in a denomination that just believed in a salvation only gospel. And then we embraced the, the uh, uh, Holy Spirit and there were found out there were a lot of people that embraced the a Holy Spirit, and that was called the full gospel. Uh, but let me tell you, there, there's more than the full gospel. Hallelujah. There's the kingdom gospel. Amen. And uh, the third thing we have to recognize is there is a kingdom gospel. There's a message, uh, and that's the fullness of God's message, because Jesus said, I, I've come to preach the kingdom. He, he mm. went in the uh, Matthew 4, verses 23, and, and uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 35, he, he went from city to city, uh, teaching and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and demonstrating the kingdom with healing, healing every sickness, and healing every disease, and so if you restore, if you restore, if you have restoration in your own life, and you bring restoration to other people, then, then you need to embrace the message, the fullness of the message, which is the gospel of the kingdom. Because Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all, all the, the nations. nations. Glory to God. Can you imagine? You're talking about the nations that are in the news today. You think about the gospel of the kingdom, kingdom. is going to be proclaimed in all of those nations, all the nations, and then the end Shall will come. come. So it's not going to be without the full gospel, and I mean by that the gospel of the kingdom. And that's what Jesus told his disciples in uh, 
Matthew verses, uh, Matthew 10 verses 7 and 8, he said, go and proclaim uh, the kingdom is the at kingdom hand. Is it's, here. Here. it's here. That was his message. The kingdom is here. You know, we don't have to look for it over there. We don't have to look for it over there. It's here. It's within our reach. And what is the kingdom? It's the realm of the Holy Spirit, the Hallelujah. supernatural Hallelujah. realm of the Holy Spirit where impossible things are possible, Hallelujah. where miracles occur because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, peace and, and joy in, in the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Amen. Holy Ghost, glory to God, the Holy Spirit. So it's the realm of the Holy Spirit. And you, to be spiritually minded, you have to be operating in that realm. Because the carnal mind cannot be subject to God's government. It's hostile to it. And so these are the first three things that you have to embrace. The Holy Spirit, the government of God, and the message of the kingdom. I mean, not, I mean. not some partial message. That's but right. you, you, have to in, you have to embrace the full message of the kingdom. That's where restoration comes. Because... Look at this, Matthew, I mean, Mark 16, 20 said uh, the, the disciples went out and they were proclaiming the word and the Lord Jesus was with Mark them, 15. working with them, confirming the word. What was the word he told them to preach? The gospel oh, of, of the, the king. kingdom. So with signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. So you want, the, you want signs and wonders in your life. You've got to have these three things, the Holy Spirit, the government of God, and the message of the kingdom. Hallelujah. All of these have to be restored to you. That's what this series is about, about you giving life, uh, ministering life to other people. And you're going to have to embrace these three things. These are the core things. But uh, in restoration, I, I want to point some out something. Now I'm going to go on to a little different topic. Uh, um, in restoration, there's something that when God makes a promise, he expects something from you. And when he makes a promise to you or to someone else about restoration, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about restoration tonight. How do we get it operating? So these, these are the application. This is the application. There's a really important principle here to get restoration operating in your life. And we find it in Ezekiel uh, chapter 36 and uh, starts in about 22. And God gives all these promises. He's, he said he's going to restore Israel. He's going to bring back the, the people, his people from all the nations. And he's going to pour water on them, clean them and purge them. And he, he's going to restore it. So he, he makes like 17 promises right there in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm about restoration and, and he didn't say you had to do this or you did, had to do that no he just said i'm going to restore we've seen that haven't we in it in israel i, I mean uh, uh, back in the 40s there there hadn't been uh, a nation of israel for hundreds and hundreds of years and then overnight there was a nation hallelujah that, that was known hallelujah. as israel so that's restoration so that confirms that the bible is true yes it, it, see if we'd never seen israel restored uh then we don't know whether it would be true or not but we've seen israel restored in our lifetime and, and he made all those promises but then in ezekiel 36 37 he tells what he expects of us. This is a tremendous principle that we need to uh, live and abide by. And he says in verse 37, I will have you. I'm expecting you to inquire of me. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. So, hallelujah. What, what does he mean by <laughs> inquire of him? He makes these promises. I, I know that God has made promises to you, each and every person here tonight. God has made promises to you, and some of those promises have not yet been manifested. Mm -hmm. and, and why is that? Well, because he expects something of you. Uh, and, and I, I want to go through this and, and dwell on it for a little while, uh, because what happens if you get a prophetic word? If you get a prophetic word, uh, what are you going to do with it? Well, a lot of people get a prophetic word, and, and they just uh, put it on a shelf and not think any more about it and think, well, either that was a false prophet or a true prophet. If that was a false prophet, it's not going to come to pass. If it was a true prophet, 
it's going to come to pass. Well, but what he's saying here in Ezekiel 36, 37 is that I am expecting you to inquire of me, really seek after me so that I can fulfill what I promised. So he makes all these promises mm -hmm. here, 17 promises about restoring Israel. And, and then he says, I, when you see these things happening, you start inquiring of me. We ought to all be inquiring of the Lord, the Lord. about Amen. restoration. Now, let's think a moment for about Daniel in chapter nine, verses one through three. Uh, Daniel uh, started looking through the Bible and reading the Bible, and he saw Jeremiah said, Israel is going to be restored. A and um, it's going to be restored after so many years. And and Daniel was reading the Bible and he said, oh, this is the time. And, and Daniel could have said, well, we'll just put this on the shelf and we'll see whether Jeremiah was a false prophet or a true prophet. He could have said that, but he didn't. You know what he did? He went into fasting and, and sack, sackcloth and ashes and praying because he was doing what Ezekiel 36, 37 said, inquire of the Lord. When, when you begin seeing things happening and you, you've got a promise and you haven't seen it manifested, this is what you do. You, you start fasting and you put in sackcloth and ashes and, and praying and seeking. See, the matter of, listen, this is very important. The matter of the promise is the matter of your prayer. So what, what Woo, God, what God, what God oh. says to you, what he promises to you, that's what you focus your prayer on. The matter of the promise is the matter of your prayer. Mm. Inquire of the Lord. Inquire of the Lord. That's the time. Now, okay, so we see Daniel did it. He didn't just say, well, we will see whether or not Jeremiah was a true prophet or a false prophet. Let me tell you, Jeremiah was a true prophet. And when he made that promise that God's going to restore Israel, uh, it was the truth. But yet somebody needed to pray. Somebody needed to be oh, seeking God. Hallelujah. It's the same that uh, the verse I said about Isaiah 9. that said, uh, for unto us a child this is born, gives. unto us a son is given. Okay. And that's a promise. And that didn't say anybody needed to do anything. But I tell you, there was two people in the temple praying for his birth, and that was yes, Anna, Anna and Simeon. There yes. had to be somebody. Ooh, That's, if you want to see where the promises come up to pass, you've got to be seeking God. You've got to be watching for God, listening to him, praying about things. The matter of the promise is the matter of your prayer. You put, you focus your prayers on what the promise is. Hallelujah. Get the promises. Bring them out of the supernatural Hallelujah. realm. Get them manifested into the natural realm. I'm going to give you this uh, personal example. Uh, see, in uh, the end of 1992, uh, three doctors had examined Sherry, and they said she will not live six months because of cancer. Will not live for six months. Okay, now each of us had a promise. Uh, because the Lord had promised me, I heard these words, you have the victory over this. Oh, I actually said, we have the victory over this. When he said that, I knew he was talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Yeah. Uh, Sherry, and me, the five of us, we had the victory. I didn't know what it was, but later in that same month, or the doctor said it was cancer, and it's terminal cancer, and she'll be dead in six months, but I heard we have the victory over this. Sherry heard the verse. Uh, Psalms you, 118, 17. And what did it say? I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Okay, so here are two promises. Uh, we, both of these, and, and they were concerning the same situation that she was dealing with. We, we knew she was having uh, health issues. We didn't know what it, what it was. And so uh, the doctor said, she was, had terminal cancer and would not live six months. What I said, when, when she came and picked me up uh, after she had gotten that conversation, I was out praying, uh, seeking the Lord about that very thing. And uh, she came and, and picked me up uh, in the vehicle. And I, when I got in, she said, uh, the doctors have just called me. I just got off the phone with them. Uh, they said I had terminal cancer and I would not live six months. I said, we have the victory over this mm -hmm. because I was quoting the what I had heard the uh, Holy Spirit speak to me 
just days earlier. And what I said, the next thing I said was, go home and pack your bags. We are going out of town to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And see, so many mm -hmm. people, when they get the doctor's report, uh, then they're just going to uh, down, ball, uh, break down and ball about it and call all of their friends and neighbors and tell everybody this is what's going to happen. We're going to be dead in six months. You got to be kidding me. You've got to <laughs> seek God. If you have a promise from God, you've got to seek God. That's what Ezekiel 36, 37 said. That's what Daniel did Hallelujah. on restoration. He began praying to God, fasting. Fasting is really a part of this right now. Seeking God, inquiring of me, fasting. Fasting, see, does not move God, but it moves your flesh out of the way so that you can hear God. It does not move God. And there's a lot of people that, that fast and, and they go about their same old thing day after day mm -hmm. and they're not uh, doing a spiritual fast. I'll, I'll talk about that next uh, because mm -hmm. I, Isaiah 58, uh, uh, the chapter talks about uh, two kinds of fast. And one is a fast of food that their people stop eating uh, food for a period of time. Uh, different ways of, of fasting, uh, but God's not pleased with what they were doing. What was the problem? Well, they were just very legalistic, very uh, naturally minded. They were going about doing their own thing. They weren't seeking God. They were, they were stopping eating certain foods at certain times, but they were not seeking God. And, but there was a spiritual fast, and that began in Isaiah 58, verse 6, mm. and it says, is not this the, the fast? fast that I've this chosen. is a spiritual fast to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed, oppressed go, go free. free, and that you break every, every yoke. yoke. Hallelujah. Yeah. So there are two kinds of fast. And I'm not, I'm not uh, partial to just fasting food without seeking God. I, I, as a matter of fact, I think it's a waste of your time. You might lose some weight doing that, but you're not going to uh, have an encounter with God. Ooh, if, you're going to, if you're going about doing your own agenda, doing your own thing. And, and thinking the way you've always and, thought. It's got to be a change. There has to be change in you. A spiritual fast. And then what happens if we're breaking the bonds of wickedness and undoing the heavy burdens, letting the oppressed go free. And, and there's an interesting verse here in Isaiah 58 because this is raising up people who will restore others. Those who do spiritual fast, inquiring of the Lord. Jerry, read about this. This is uh, Isaiah 58, verse 12. Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. Restore. Mm -hmm. You will raise up the old age old foundations. Restore. And you will be called the repairer of the breach. Restore. The restorer of the streets in which you dwell hallelujah Whoa, glory to god you see, hallelujah. see that, that, that's that's where you're headed if you do a spiritual fast where you're inquiring of the lord and the matter of the promise is the matter of your prayer then you become a person who restores the waste places who restores the cities to, uh to walk on mm -hmm. in your uh, the streets to walk on in your city that that's uh, that's who you are that's who you are you are called to be a restorer of the streets to dwell in and walk in and, and the repair of the breach. And the re you are the restorer. You're the one giving life to other people. Yes. And so how do we do it? Well, I've talked about the three restoration things, uh, uh, restoring to the Holy Spirit, restoring to the God's mm -hmm. government, submitting to his government and restoring to the full message of the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just bringing this to a closure that it's this concept of a spiritual fast of seeking God. You get a promise, you, you seek God about it. The same thing is in Joel. This is the third and final passage that I'll focus on. And, and in Joel, we see the canker worms, the, all kinds of worms are mm -hmm. eating everything. And so the things have been destroyed and been diminished. And, and, and what does God say? He said, 
call a fast. Call a yes, fast. Yes, a solemn assembly. A solemn assembly. Blow the trumpet it in Zion. Zion. Why, why? Because they're wanting restoration. They're wanting restoration. It's about fasting. And, and why is that? Because the matter of the promise is the matter of your prayer. You focus on the promise. What uh, what is going to happen to get a restoration and so that we have the promise manifested in our life. And this is what uh, uh, the prophet says in the book of Joel. And he said in uh, Joel chapter two, verse uh, 28, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Spirit. Because we're, all talking, because we're talking about spiritual restoration. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And your old men are going to uh, see some uh, dreams and your young men are going to uh, see, see visions. That's me. Oh, hallelujah. And the, your children, <laughs> your children are going to prophesy. Glory to God. Aiden's going to prophesy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Little children, little children are going to prophesy because this is spiritual restoration. Amen. We're talking about. Amen. And, and Joel in chapter one, it was destroyed, it was desolate. And, and then God, uh, says well seek me call a fast blow the trumpet, trumpet in zion. zion and what am i going to do i'm going to pour out Woo! my spirit on all flesh same thing Hallelujah. in acts chapter 2 pouring out his spirit upon all flesh because god's heart is for restoration and it's going to take restoration is going to take the spirit of god and, and embracing the spirit of god and then the gifts come forth and, and, and there's embracing uh, the government of God by the spirit of God and embracing the message of the kingdom gospel. And so you are called and equipped Gift. to Amen. become a restorer of the breach Hallelujah. And, and a restorer of the streets to dwell in. Amen. This is not just a little things we're talking about here. I want you to read this verse again in Isaiah. This is not; these are not insignificant things that are going to be restored. Uh, I'll ask Sherry to read that verse again. Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will raise up the age-old foundations, and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. Hallelujah! That is you. That's your calling. Amen. And I've shown you how to get there today. And I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a part of this. This is an important message. This is this is showing your calling. This is revealing your calling of what God is expecting. God is laying out promises to you uh, one after another, uh, one upon uh, line upon line here, a little there. A little. He's laying out these promises and he wants you to bring them forth, manifest them on the earth Amen. Uh, today. And so I'm going to turn it over to you. Amen. You know, each and every day, Brother Fred and I pray about the restoration uh, for good government, uh, good government in this nation, good government locally, uh, good government in whatever state you might be in, uh, and the just that restoring uh, of good government. And it says that if we have good government, then we will have a peaceful life. And if you want a peaceful life, then you need to be praying that that government uh, locally, nationally, in your state uh, will be restored. And we have seen restoration in our family. Uh, our, our son, Jason, uh, now has uh, a bank account that has enough money uh, for buying a house. Uh, about a year or so ago, uh, well, four years ago, he was sitting in jail. Uh, they were talking eight years in prison. Uh, and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to restore everything that the enemy has stolen from him. And if you've ever had anything stolen from you, uh, then you need to be inquiring of the Lord and begin to pray that restoration come into your into your life, into your uh, family, uh, into whatever that has been stolen from you. And we have seen him grow in the Lord. We have seen God restoring uh, uh, natural things to him, but also spiritual things to him. Uh, and so when we get together, we talk about the Lord. Uh, we talk about what God is doing. And, uh, and four years ago, that wasn't the case. 
And so I know that my God is able uh, to restore. Uh, he's able to restore your health. He's able to restore your, your joy. You know, King David said, restore uh, the joy of my salvation. I believe that King David knew about restoration. And I believe every leader in the kingdom of God needs to know not only about restoration, but that you are a restorer of the breach, things that have been broken, things that have been stolen and, and things that have been lacking, uh, that this is, this is part of your, your calling. What are you called to? I'm telling you tonight, we're telling you tonight that you are a restorer of the breach. Hallelujah. And so this is an exciting time. The Lord has poured out his spirit upon all flesh and and what the worms have eaten up i believe that god is bringing uh full uh restoration uh to your health uh to your your mind to your finances some of you've had money stolen from you uh that the enemy has eaten up uh some of your your enthusiasm and your energy and and your your passion uh, for doing things of God, uh, all of that is being restored uh, in the name of Jesus. And uh, and so I pray that you will take hold of this message uh, and and go forth and and begin to do it. I see I see the the children that are represented here, uh, your grandchildren, and I see little uh, Aiden, and I see uh, Annie and. And, and Victoria, Tori, uh, I see um, many of your your children and grandchildren uh, that God is is using uh, to to bring His will uh, upon the earth, and we're going to see more of that. And uh, it's exciting to 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 see the move of the Spirit. I'm going to open it up.